Thank you, Doctor. We have returned. Okay. Hooray, hooray. Okay. I have a feeling Tim Conway was born funny. Mm -hmm. he, he had to be funny when he was a kid. He's sure funny now. And after extensive research, uh, Tim has written an invaluable guide <laughs> that <laughs> provides... Well, all of us have some, yeah. one time or another arrived home late. Yes. Uh, sometimes, maybe two hours, sometimes, maybe. Three days. Well, yeah. <laughs> Tim covers it up to a year. <laughs> yeah. He covers it if you're gone, if you're an hour late, if you're 20 minutes late, up to oh. six months. And the various excuses that you tell uh, your, uh, your frau, yes, your yes. wife, and it's called, You Slept Where Last Night? <laughs> Would you welcome, please, Tim Conway. Um, <laughs> well, Tim apparently is uh, temporarily uh, not late, uh, detained. He's here. Uh, he's yeah, he's here. Uh, can we get a camera loose backstage? <laughs> what? Sure, go ahead. All right, Bobby. Uh, I'll, I'll show you where he is. If Kevin is not, if if Kevin is not kidding me, come with me and we'll go. We'll go. I'll be just back in a second. Uh, are you sure? No, we'll be, stay here. Okay. You sure? Yes. All right. Well, only Conway would do this. This is our lovely studio here. This is where they take the audience on the NBC tour, which they charge what now? $5.50. This is known as a hall. These are walls here. Chuck Woolery at this moment is naked in his dressing room. We can't go in there. Uh, there's our wardrobe department in here. This goes upstairs and down here. This is where he's... Down to the right. I don't believe this. Oh, me. Uh, what, uh... Oh, come on. Tim. <laughs> what, what is the problem? <laughs> How did you get the tie? Why don't they get the... Uh, don't worry, there. I introduced you about half an hour ago. Well, I'm not there, am I? No. Well, as soon as I, I get this out, I'll be there. Oh, I Does that bother you? Uh, how, did, how did it get in there? I, I don't know. I, I, I just happened to this thing caught it here, and it, it rolled up into there. So, yeah. uh, you know. Well, we can't, we can't do the interview from the men's room here. Could you possibly? Why can't you? Can what, I cut it? Let me make a show. Huh? Yeah. Can I cut it off? Cut it. The kids gave me this tie. You gonna cut it to the sky like this? No, I wouldn't huh? want to do that. Got about four bucks tied up in this. You, you know, this? just because you're big bucks, you know, I like to hang on to things. More towels like are this. coming out here. I, I understand that, okay? I'll be with you in a minute. Look, is there anything wrong with doing the show in here? Uh, no, we've, we've, we've died before, both of us. I understand. In places yeah. like it. You'll just be great for Marilyn Horn, who's gonna sing later because you. That's voices, right. voices good. Ah, 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 ah. Bring her in here. I'll be with you in a minute. <clears throat> this is, this is not gonna work, huh? Oh, okay. Look, I could come back tomorrow night. It's not a big thing. No, you know what I mean? We need, uh, tell you what, we'll work this out and uh, do a commercial or something. I'll help Tim get out of this. You Don't know. cut the tie. I'm going to cut this. is stupid. You're really crazy. <laughs> okay. And now, here is Mr. Tim Conway. Huh? You're a silly person. Yeah, sorry about being late. I really am. I, uh, I hope I didn't hold you up. You know, I didn't know. Happy. Did you know they were going to do sound effects? No, I didn't. And uh, <laughs> some uh, pretty authentic ones. Too, yes, they certainly were. Yeah. Let me help. Oh, you. yeah, I'm kind of fortunate I didn't get it in the toilet. I've been. Uh... <laughs> oh. oh, I'm nice. sorry to see that. Uh, great. Okay. Was that yeah. really one of your. Uh... Favorite times? Yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, kids gave me this, but don't worry about it. No, we'll know? get you. Oh, it's fine. We'll fine. get you a new tie. That. Sure, Brand yeah. new tie. This was a uh, $3 tie, so <laughs> fine. <laughs> Certainly would. Yeah, huh? I was reading this on the office this afternoon. Uh-huh. It's I'm... genuinely funny. Is it really? Yeah. You never know about those things until I you, laughed. Uh, uh, did you really? I said and I laughed. Then I'm not even going to sell it. I chuckled and, and I, I chuckled and I chortled. Yeah. Uh, you did it... a lot of research on this? Very much so. This is a book on uh, cheating. Actually, Not I didn't. Cheating. Uh, I wasn't uh, cheating. I just, it was uh, a lot of people helped me 
write the book. Good. Now, <clears throat> mostly through observation, actually, what it was. Right. And uh, it's kind of advice if uh, any guy... Well, see, you don't exactly cheat. You really, uh, what I call, supplement your marriage. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of times th this will happen to you. You're out of town, and uh, you go to a uh, hotel or something, and because of double booking, a lot of times, you're uh, forced to, forced to share spend a room. Uh, or share a room. Yeah, and a lot of times it uh, just happens to be a woman. And um, <clears throat> these are kind of excuses that you would want to explain to your wife if she should actually question that. I like the way you have broken it down, mm -hmm. depending on the time uh, you are late, up to 10 minutes, up to uh, a year, I guess. Yeah. And the, 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 the excuse you use, and then you fortify the excuse with an appropriate gift and right. the cost of the gift. Right, yeah. For example, if, if you're 10 minutes late, you say, hi, I'm sorry, I'm 10 minutes late. Gift suggestion, none. Mm -hmm. Estimated cost, none. Right. That's for 10 right. minutes. <laughs> now we go up to, um, say, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You say, hi, honey, I'm 30 minutes late. I've been walking around the house. We sure could use some new plants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gift suggestion, plants. Estimated cost, none. Just suggest the plants. Buying them is not necessary. Right. <laughs> now you start to get into a uh, little heavier offenses. Yeah, the uh, latest I ever was was a month. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, and, of course, that was a uh, McDonald's franchise that you had to buy for that one. <laughs> Sleeper. Shall I give him the... Can I just give him a four-hour excuse? Certainly. Yeah. Hi, honey. Always start off with hi, honey. Of course. I'm sorry I'm four hours late. I just stopped off to get my car washed, and darned if Sally didn't talk me into getting a special super wax job. By the way, I bought you that new watch you wanted. <laughs> Gift suggestion, new watch. $100, $20 for the Timex, and $80 for Boom Boom Sally, the hot waxer at the washer dryer. <laughs> and it goes on and on. Yeah, have to uh, supplement. Now, you're not suggesting, of course, or we're not endorsing. No, 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 no. As I say, these are stories I've actually heard from guys, from you know, yeah. Incidentally, if you're a year late, uh, you'd have to buy Ohio. Which you is, uh, yeah, a little steep, so you got to watch that one. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever have, when you were married, did you have problems? I mean, we've, we've been out before. I mean, you and Harvey and I went out one night, and we stayed out. Uh, rather, rather we were late. almost still gone a week that time, as yes. I recall. Yeah, that was a little steep, yeah. No, you kind of, well, I think what you have to do, uh, I, I call it the uh, cough for life. Uh, if uh, you come in at 3 o'clock in the morning and your wife says, where have you been? You go, where have I been? <coughs> I'll tell you. Now, <laughs> that's the kind of kick in. During that cough, you better come up with your life. <laughs> <laughs> and a pretty decent excuse, might I add. Yeah, just... Um, I have found me. another thing that, and, uh, again, by observing other people. Oh, yes, of course, yeah, sure. I have found that men tend to over-explain. Mm -hmm. You know, but you've, you've got your story set in mind, and... You come in maybe an hour and a half late, mm -hmm. and rather than just saying, I'm sorry, I'm late, she says, where have you been? I met Ralph at 6.30. We, we drove into town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we went to so-and-so. I had some steak and potatoes and french fries, and, then the, and, you, <laughs> and that's all she asked was, where were you? Know, yeah. Why are you late? And, and you, you get deeper. And you yeah. make this big story. That's, that's a tip-off. I try uh, uh, a diversion is good, too. Yeah. Uh, learn to break uh, every uh, major bone in your body right away. When they so, ask you where have you been, you just snap your arm, and it kind of then they worry about your arm, and you uh, kind of take the heat off there. Yeah. Incidentally, if you keep a diary, you should be able to eat that diary. I noticed that. Yeah. It? Oh yeah, right away. Should be edible. Yeah, you should be edible. That's perfect. Yeah. But uh, no, I I don't think I would ever do that. No, no. Well, you have a new marriage now. Just yes, two years, two years, years old. old. Yeah, and very happily married. So That's I'm good. I'm glad. Reason. I'm glad I got this out of my system. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Somebody told me a couple of months ago, that's a true story now, you were on a plane that was a, they, um, they tried to hijack it. Uh, it was an attempted, attempted hi hijack or comedy scene. I honestly thought you were on the plane. I really did. A put, it was a put on or something? A uh, no, it was a real joke. Yeah. Uh, I can't mention the airlines because it's still a little uh, problem there. But I got on, I was coming from New Jersey here. And, uh... oh, you're from here? Good. Uh, <laughs> Here always yeah. gets the biggest uh, biggest applause. A lot of people from here. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, going first class because somebody else was paying for it, of course. Naturally. I, normally I'm in the back with a folding chair and a ticket. But <laughs> I was in first class. It was about eight people. And this lady up in front uh, was making strange noises. Now, later we learned that she was either smoking the drapes or had, uh, had a little too much to drink before this happened. And she started irritating the people in front of her. So they finally moved. And then... She kept making these strange noises, and the stewardess went down and said, excuse me, but um, we're going to have to restrain you if you don't shut up. 
I mean, it was getting that bad. Yeah. And uh, she said a few words to the stewardess, which uh, the stewardess came back. And then uh, she, this lady started taking her clothes off. This is the truth. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'm, you kind of have a tendency to flower these things, but this is the truth. So she started taking her clothes off. So now the stewardess went back up and she said, put your clothes on, we're really going to have to restrain you. Now, I didn't agree with the stewardess, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so we were on a whole situation. Yes, the whole situation. I thought, you know, let's see how far this goes. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, she's in the first class. Yes. Yeah. Now, they've come back and now they have a little cart that's going up with bagels and cream cheese and everything. And now these people have moved and it's only in this aisle that this other lady and myself are seated. I'm in the last row in the back. And somehow I know I'm going to be in this eventually, so I'm just reading a magazine, trying to mind my own business. So she goes now past this girl, and uh, she's, this girl is yelling again, and the stewardess says, sit down. With this, the girl pops the stewardess, and the bagels go all over, and she runs toward the cabin of the plane, and she's pulling on the door for the captain to come up. So I'm just reading my magazine, of course. Now she comes around the bulkhead and standing there and puts her hand in a pocket and says, okay, I'm taking over this plane. Only she had kind of a pet name for the plane. So now, <laughs> so we know she's not kidding. You know, mm -hmm. evidently she had been familiar with the plane. So now, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> since I am sitting in the back row, I, now, the stewardesses who normally are, were just there with the uh, coffee, tea, milk, I mean, uh, uh, champagne, anything, you keep going, no, no, no. They're not anywhere around now because they see the impending danger here. <laughs> so from and back, I hear the stewardess call the captain and she says, we have an, uh, some uh, lady out here who looks as though she's taking over the plane. Looks as though, <laughs> it's quite evident, I thought. Um, <laughs> so now the captain is going to come out and uh, I hear saying the captain's going to come out and what you're expecting is John Wayne, right? It's yeah. going to be a six foot seven guy come out and stop this whole thing. Well, what it is, is a guy who's got about a week left before retirement. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it looks to be an Irish guy, his big red face and everything. He comes out and he comes around the corner and he says to this lady, uh, excuse me, and he takes off his hat and they carry a band in their hat, a white band that they evidently tie people up with. And he said, I'm going to have to restrain you. Now, <clears throat> she has some suggestions for him and the band. <laughs> So he says, thank you, and he goes back into the uh, cockpit. <laughs> so we're all Nice talking again. with yeah. you. He's flinched. Now she comes down my aisle, and I think, this is it. And she comes up to me, and she looks at me, and she said, uh, you're the funny man, huh? And I said, well, I've got reviews to disprove that all over the nation, you know. <laughs> so I figure if I could get her to sit down, maybe we could at least talk. So I said, do you want to sit down? And she said, I'm not sitting down for anybody. And I said, no, I mean, do you want to sit down? If you do, you're more than welcome. So she says, no. Now she starts to take off her clothes again. So I think, you know, <clears throat> what could this be? And she actually said to me, uh, you want to get it on? Now, what I'm trying to do is think, how do you explain to your wife when you get home what I had to do to save 281 people? <laughs> My hands are tied. Of course. You know, you know, I mean, what can I... Well, eventually, a guy comes up with a towel behind her, grabs her, knocks her down, and ties her up. And we had to then land in Detroit, and uh, she was taken off. And, uh, yeah. And you could have been a hero. Yeah, I could have been. I really could have been. <laughs> That's the thing that bugged me. That's I tried to stop the guy, moral... too. I said, wait, you know, I mean, hold it. Yes. <laughs> this woman doesn't need to be tied. Yes, That's right. I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Take a break. We'll be right back. Yeah.